Hello, everyone. Welcome to Clear Perspective. I'm Serene Lee. First, let's take a look at the FBI search of Rudy Giuliani's Manhattan apartment. On April 28th, seven FBI agents came to Giuliani's home and searched it for two hours. They confiscated several cell phones, laptops, computers, and other electronic devices. Shockingly, they refused to take Hunter Biden's notorious hard drives. Giuliani's attorney, Robert Costello, said in a statement that the fact the FBI refused to look at the hard drive suggests the investigation was politically motivated. When it comes to Hunter Biden's hard drive, I can't help but think of John Kerry. The New York Times secretly recorded Kerry leaking military secrets to the foreign minister of Iran, a U.S. designated terrorist state. But the White House has been silent on the matter. Why is Biden silent? The tapes should have been a major international scandal and could have been the grounds for firing Kerry. Why has the White House remained silent? There is a reason. Although Biden and Kerry have been good friends for many years, such friendships do not guarantee security. A tape released exclusively by the National Post shows Hunt Biden bragging about doing business with foreign adversaries, including a Chinese spy chief. A confession that became incriminating evidence of Hunt Biden's foreign connections. Among Hunter Biden's partners, the most important one is John Kerry's stepson, Christopher Hines. According to the National Post, Christopher Hines co-founded Rosemont Capital in 2009. This is an international private equity firm that is financially backed by the Hines family with Hunter Biden. The managing director of the firm was Hines' Yale roommate, Devin Archer. The National Post also revealed that the documents on Hunter Biden's hard drive showed that those three were Hunter Biden's closest partners. Wherever this trail went, corruption followed and foreign cash flowed. That is to say, Kerry's stepson and Biden's son are on the same boat, and Kerry's stepson had known enough to protect himself and even threaten Biden. At first, Hunter Biden and Devin Archer joined the scandal-ridden Ukrainian gas company Burisma as directors. However, after it was revealed in 2014, Christopher Hines immediately distanced himself from the Rosemont brand. Hines emailed his stepfather's top aides at the State Department. I can't speak why they decided to, but there was no investment by our firm in their company. The National Post also mentioned that Hines, spokesperson, told the Washington Post, The lack of judgment in this matter was a major catalyst for Mr. Hines ending his business relationships with Mr. Archer and Mr. Biden. As proven by their last performance, John Kerry and his stepson are also ruthless. They have the dirt on the Biden family in their hands, so Biden would not dare to pick on them easily, let alone dismiss them. Going back to the FBI, why is it that they confiscated so many of Giuliani's devices but refused to take Hunter Biden's hard drives? They probably had a predetermined target in mind. At least one source claims that the real incentive behind this investigation is actually Trump. The devices were reported to be full of business communications between Giuliani and Trump. Some speculate that this was done to prevent Trump from running for president again in 2024. In an interview with Fox News host Maria Bataroma, Trump said that he was definitely considering running in 2024. He needs until the 2022 midterm elections to make a decision. However, he has revealed that his running mate will likely be Florida Governor DeSantis. He also said that he will resume the mega rallies again. The rallies are scheduled for as early as May. In the interview, he responded to the FBI raid as well. 
Rudy Giuliani is a great patriot. He does these things. He just loves this country, and they raid his apartment. It's so unfair and such a double standard. It's very, very unfair. When you look at the level of corruption in this country, it's really a huge problem. Perhaps Trump regrets that he didn't do more to fix the corruption. Next, let's talk about Joe Biden's latest speech. Newsmax asked the body language expert to decode Biden's speech on his 100th day in office. The expert told Newsmax that his body language showed clear signs of practice, including the way he used his words and his gestures. It seemed that Harris and Pelosi were also very tense, especially when there were words that were difficult to pronounce. It seemed that whenever Biden said these words correctly, there was a flash of relief that washed over their faces. Biden said in his speech, In my discussion with President Xi, I told him that we welcome the competition and that we are not looking for conflict. But I made absolutely clear that I will defend American interests across the board. I also told President Xi that we will maintain a strong military presence in the Indo-Pacific, just as we do with NATO in Europe. The Biden administration has been consistent in the idea that racism is still a very big problem in America and has been using this to push for affirmative action, equal rights, and social justice. However, Tim Scott, currently the only black Republican senator, does not buy into any of this. He stated, America is not a racist country, and cautioned that race is not a political weapon to settle every issue the way one side wants. He also stated, our best future won't come from Washington schemes or socialist dreams. It will come from you, the American people. Something worth noting is that after Scott delivered the speech, the Republican Party considered making him the next presidential candidate. It seems like the Republican Party is desperately looking for a replacement for Trump in the next general election. But they are really naive. Trump's popularity makes him hard to replace. They do not recognize the reality. Of course, this is what the Republican Party wants and does not reflect Scott's own opinion. From his speech, we can surmise that he indeed loves his country. This is in stark contrast to the many people who would betray national interests at a whim. The National Post published an article on April 27th regarding Project Syndicate, a media outlet that is funded by George Soros, Bill Gates, the United Nations, and Google. Project Syndicate also published op-eds and analysis from prominent political leaders, policymakers, scholars, business leaders, and civic activists. The globalist propaganda outlet Project Syndicate has also been lauded by the Chinese Communist Party's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Their Twitter account praised the outlet's content that defended the genocide in Xinjiang as objective and informative. Project Syndicate, founded in 1955, are engaged in a media partnership with several Chinese state-run media outlets, some of which include China Global Television Network, China Daily, and The Global Times. Together, these sites have published nearly 2,000 articles from this outlet, including content praising the Chinese Communist Party and attacking the U.S. Its operation is funded by several foundations, including George Soros Open Society Foundations, the Bill and the Melinda Gates Foundation, the Google Digital News Initiative, and the United Nations Sustainable Development Solutions Network. Since 2012, the Gates Foundation has provided them with around $5.2 million for global health and development, public awareness and analysis. Both Bill and Melinda Gates have also contributed articles to the site. Google News Initiative has also funded around 260,000 and the Open Society Foundations has donated more than 700,000 since 2018 to Project Syndicate. 
Soros has also provided more than 110 op-eds. We say that people are divided into groups. This doesn't mean classifying people by their race or country, but by their thoughts. People's thoughts and values have no national boundaries. The globalists and the Chinese Communist Party like each other because they share common interests and values. The only difference is that these globalists do not have the concept of a nation. They want to create a world government and weaken the concept of national sovereignty. On the other hand, the CCP is the center of evil. They want to stay in power and dominate the world. In my opinion, there is only one classification for people, those who stand for justice and those who don't. Things like race, color, age, gender, nationality, social status, and personality don't make a big difference. Those politicians are now using these categories to create conflicts. We just need to make people all over the world recognize goodness. I hope all of us can start by spreading justice and influence more people. Lastly, we would like to remind our viewers again that our platform may be restricted on social media. We would like to recommend the Umaker platform to everyone. Our videos are available on Umaker. Please subscribe and we hope to see you there. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you next time.